Hey folks, David Frost, MyStrategicForecast.com. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Monday, August 11th, 2014. You're looking at a daily chart of the SPY, which mirror images the uh, S&P 500. And what you'll notice is now we've had two consecutive up days or two bounce days. We had Friday and today. And basically today, I want to show you an intraday chart because it's interesting. What you had today was you had a gap up at the open. The market looked like it wanted to run higher. And then all of a sudden at about 11, 11 to 11.30 in the morning, it just started melting away. It kind of came back to actually a little below where it opened up. So if we look at the 60-minute chart, let's see if we can get an idea of what might happen tomorrow. So this could be a bearish pattern setting up. Uh, pardon me, a bullish pattern setting up. Uh, the market could spike higher in the morning. And even on the 10-minute chart, um, you know, you can make a case for up move and then uh, sideways to downward consolidation, making this bear flag pattern that looks like up. And then the flag pattern down here and then another move up. So that's possibility. Um, what, you're, what, you're, what you've got here is a couple things working. So you have options expiration week this week, okay? So the, the third Friday of every month, you have options expiration. And there's weekly options and there's monthly options. But the traditional standard option expiration is this Friday, or actually they expire Saturday, but Friday's the last trading day. So you have the standard options expiration week. And what happens is you get a lot of game playing and whipsaw uh, around in the market during options expiration week. So um, what I would expect is I would expect a, uh, a down day somewhere in the middle of this week. Uh, and then I would, I would also expect at least another up day, if not two, for the remainder of the week. So my best guess is you'll have a down day, whether it's tomorrow or Wednesday. You know, there's only time will tell. Uh, and then you should have another you know, they'll, they'll play the tricks and try and fool everybody that went short on the down day uh, to cover the following day and they'll rip the market up long side. Uh, that's kind of how it will work during options expiration week. I've seen it so many times. I just, I can see it coming. So um, that's pretty much what we have. So I don't think that the market will give you any kind of a breakdown specifically below this low here this week. Uh, mainly due to options expiration week. I just don't see the market uh, breaking down this week. Uh, next week, we'll know more when we get there. We'll see how the pattern develops. But uh, as far as how high we can go during this week and how high this bounce could take us to relieve some of the oversold condition, um, I would say that, that probably the best target right now is this high here, okay, which is going to be at uh, 195.78 which kind of will coincide. This will tick down a little bit as the week goes on. These moving averages, or at least the uh, 20 moving average will, is coming down and the 50 is kind of going sideways right now. But uh, so, the, so the index could come up into those moving averages, which would be kind of around this high, maybe not quite as high. And, and that'll definitely act as some resistance. It's very hard for me to see the market uh, gapping up above these moving averages this week unless we get some wacky news overnight uh, like everything's fixed the Middle East is fixed and Russia's fixed and the economy's fixed and Europe's fixed all that stuff in one day other than that I just don't see it happening but we'll, we'll play it by ear we'll see what happens so that's kind of where we are in the SPY look for some more upward momentum uh, look for some some more sideways to upward momentum in fact uh, remember from Friday, I talked about the, the, the possible patterns that may develop, okay? So one of them was up, A, B down, and C up. So right now we've had the up, okay? So if we see like a solid down day tomorrow, down maybe 1% uh, or something like that, that would be your B move most likely, and then your C move would be up to finish the move up to this area here, and then we would you know, maybe fall back down. And we'll see what happens when we get there. We'll see what the pattern tells us. Another possibility, which is a equal possibility to the last one, is up where we went, sideways for a few days, and then up again. So we might form another uh, bull flag pattern and then up again. So we'll see. Those are the two uh, 
bullish patterns that I see. Uh, if we get one more spike into here, we could just fall back down. That's a possibility. I just don't see that happening for some reason. I have no evidence of that. It's just, it's more of a gut market experience type of call. I'm not saying it won't happen. I just don't see it happening, but you know, anything goes. Um, but th that's my best analysis for the, for the rest of the week on the uh, SPY. So let's move over and take a look at the uh, gold market, okay? Because in my mind, we're getting close, okay? I've been saying we're getting close, but you know, I'm going to say it one time again. Time and price have to converge for me to get confident to put out a trade alert. But think about this for a second. You have the 20 and the 50 moving averages converging. The gold market, this is GLD, the gold market is above those moving averages. So if we tick down, you know, it's not that much. It's way less than a dollar even. If we tick down towards this 20 moving average and we kind of stay in this pattern for another couple days, uh, then we can start to see a takeoff to the upside. And the first target would be fill this gap right here, 28, 28 and a half. And then we could proceed up to maybe 132 on the upside for now. And then we'll see how the pattern develops from there. One thing I noticed that's interesting, and I really don't talk about this much, uh, no reason in particular, I just haven't talked about it, is silver. Now, silver and gold normally act together, uh, at least somewhat together. However, uh, they have not been. And if you notice here on the silver chart, silver has basically went down. It filled this gap right here. Okay, Now it's making a sideways move, which could be... Uh, considered sideways, you know, bear flag type of pattern, waiting for another down move. Now, it's hard for me to see silver moving down and gold moving up at the same time. That is kind of rare, I mean, in any magnitude of move, but uh, this definitely is not a healthy chart. So either this will correct itself to the upside, it'll break down, and possibly gold pattern could fail. Okay, that's a possibility, and then they could go together. Or they're just not correlated and period, end of story, and it'll do what it's going to do. And I don't think any markets are really correlated other than for particular points in time. But um, but the, over the long term, there are some correlations that do make sense. Gold and silver are correlated more than they're not. But they're not, they don't have to move together, but they certainly are correlated more than they're not. If you go back to a few years ago when gold was making its all time highs, it was inverse to the dollar. Every time the dollar would go down, the market would go up and gold would go up. The dollar would go up, gold would go down, and the market would go down. And, and that's what the correlation was working for a while, and then it doesn't work now. It broke down. So, Gold and silver work for a while, and then they don't. So that's that's an explanation of correlations. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Don't count on correlations. It's just something that we take notice of. We're aware of them, but we don't use them in our trading methodology because they, they work sometimes, and sometimes they don't. Um, GDX, more of the same. Uh, not really anything staggering there. Up a little bit. GDX was up 19 cents today. Still uh, working this inverse head and shoulders that's down here, right? That The neckline is, is down in this area. So we're comfortably above the neckline making a bullish uh, sideways consolidation pattern. I don't even know if I call this a flag pattern, but I would call it a sideways bullish pattern. You have an up move and then sideways, and uh, we're looking for another up move for sure. And the good news about this one is we know where we're wrong. So if anybody's in this trade, I'm not in it yet. Um, we're getting close, but not in it yet. Time and price, remember. But if anybody is in this trade, you know where you're wrong. If you come below this low, you're wrong for sure. If you even come into this 20 moving average, you could be wrong. If you break the 20 moving average, or I'm sorry, this is the 50. You are wrong, most likely, and it will most likely come through this gap window to gap fill, and we just don't want to be there, and, that, and that's one of the reasons why I haven't entered yet. I'm looking for time and price to converge to have a high probability trade, and that's what we like to do, as you know. Uh, you know all in all, I think today was relatively quiet. It was a Monday. Mondays tend to be quiet. 
Um, I just think it's interesting that we saw a strong market in the morning and then it, it, it got weaker. And I think, you know, part of that could have to do with short covering as a layover from last week. Maybe folks didn't cover on Friday. I don't really buy any of that stuff. I don't really care why the market was up today. It was up because it, it was it was working off an oversold condition. In fact, let me show you something. I, I should have showed you this before and it just slipped my mind. But I, I want to show you now. Um, let me give a Fibonacci retracement, okay, from the high to the low, okay? Uh, sometimes this doesn't want to go on these short ones into the right spot. Uh, I hate when that happens. All right. So it, it's close enough. Actually, you know what? I can adjust it up. Uh, if you bear with me, I'm going to adjust it up. 190.55. So let, let's get a pretty good reading here. 190.55 on the point two. So 190.55, and there it goes up. Okay, so now um, where are we? Okay, well, we, we hit the low, and the, um, on Friday, we didn't quite make it to a 382 retrace. Today, we overshot, headed for a 50% retrace, didn't get there, worked our way back down to the 382 retrace. So you see what's going on here? This is resistance. This lot of volume on this candle here, this big red candle, okay, a lot of volume. A lot of volume on the next candle when we went down, okay? Uh, down, volume, not so much volume here, but here and here, big volume, okay? That means that this, in order for, in order for this move on an up move, in order for the market to get up over this, this day here, this red candle here, the market's probably going to have to put in a, at least an equal volume day to what this showed. So you're going to have to have, you can't see the volume on my chart here on the video screen, but I'm going to tell you it's 180, almost 184 million shares. You're going to have to do 184 or thereabout million shares in one day on the upside to get through this level. That's a tough, that's a tough order. We'll see what happens, but but just wanted to show you that it's in between the 382 and the 50% retrace. That's not an accident. Can you get up to the 618? Absolutely. Can you pierce through these moving averages? Absolutely. Can you get up to the 618, which just happens to be at this high here? Absolutely. Is that a probability? Yeah, it's pretty good probability this week that that could happen. Even if it's for a minute, you can get up there. And guess what? If you get up there and you're watching the market intraday, you could probably expect a pullback off that level, and it's probably a good intraday shorting opportunity off that 618 retrace. I would take that trade all day long. Why? Because I know that on a 10-minute chart, any close above that level, just move out and lick your wounds and move on, and you can't lose that much. Okay, your downside is large because that could be the top of this move, and your, and your, your risk is a close for 10 minutes above that level, uh, and you can handle that. So that's kind of what I see. So I think it's good that I showed you the fib retrace. Uh, it, just to give you a sense for that stuff works. It's not an accident when we hit these numbers. The market is symmetrical. These numbers work. It's not Russia. Forget the media with Russia and all that nonsense. That's not the reason the market was up today. You can check the blog post for more on that. Uh, the market was up because it's working off an oversold condition. And then when it goes back down, it'll be Russia again. Mark my words. Or it'll be Iran or North Korea. It's never us. It's always somebody else's fault that the market's down. It's always somebody else's economy, somebody else's country, somebody else's war. You know, it's never us. But actually, it is us. It's our market. We take responsibility for it. It's gone too high. And it's working off some of that overbought condition. And it's coming down. And that's the way it is. All right, folks, this is an extended video. It's a little longer than normal. Uh, but I'm David Frost, mystrategicforecast.com. This was another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Thanks for tuning in.